Today, the situation in East Timor is about surviving. Families, friends, relatives, so many of them, more than 300,000 people died, disappeared. And then suddenly, here we are, the country is yours. Take care of it, you know, take a lead of it. It's not easy. People become more and more poor, like have nothing to eat. And then you see a lot of rural areas where hardly you find people actually, because people left all their resources, their land, abandoned. It's so easy for people like Timor Leste to get into it because you know what? We suffered too long. So we got used to the idea of like, yeah, somebody will take care of it because it's not my things anymore. I can't just say, go to the rural areas, go to your district. First, I myself have to go. space where they can learn, they can play, they can be themselves. Giving the space for children, motivating them to be the protector, the savior of the environmental is so possible. The idea is to let them know that there are possibilities for us to be a star if we study hard, work hard, and have commitment and discipline to take on what we have in our mind to be what we want in the future. We can only live if our living, our surrounding is actually protected. I can't imagine a life without trees, without green, without land, without clean water, without clean air, you know? I just cannot imagine. The reason I haven't stopped because I don't see much of a change yet. There is change, but the change that I want is still not there. We go slow, but we go steady. We don't stop, even though we know that there is no end to it. You know, violation, discrimination is not a one-night thing that you overcome. But some people should start, some people continue, and some people may be completed. Someday, someday, maybe not in our time, but maybe in our children's time or our grandchildren's time, that the world will be such a beautiful place for everyone. Thank you very much for having me here. First of all, I would like to thank you, Aska Tongon. Without them, I'm not here, and all of us are not here. And without them, those words are not exist. And I'm sure, because of all of you, people like you. We walk from different life, but we aim at the same things. We want a better world. We want a better home, better community for us, for our family, for all of us. A simple thing. I was here 20 years and five months ago in Tokyo and traveled across south of Japan to talk about liberation of my country that was occupied by Indonesia. I was 29 years old at that time. And this is my second time coming back with 46 years old with a different mission. At the time, I came calling all of you to support me to liberate my country. Today, I'm coming with another mission, calling all of you, us all together, help one another, create our place, each, even though I'm coming from East Timor, but I'm part of this world. I'm calling all of you 
let learning hand in hand, working together, make this world better for all of us. The struggle for changing has not been stopped, simply because there's not enough change taking place. I started involved in the liberation of my country when I was 16 years old. I exiled to Canada for almost 10 years, talking like this. Try to make people change their heart, their way of thinking, helping us. And we have a country now, today. And I thought back then that by having my country got independence, then I'll be done with my job. No, apparently not. I found myself, even I'm more struggling today, even harder to liberate myself, my family, my community, and my country from poverty, huge high unemployment of young people, gang and crimes, domestic violence, illiteracy, poverty, that struggle, and also including the community of LGBT, that again I am become one and only person in the whole country to speak about the issue. And you can imagine, there are of course many issues, but I involve heavily in a few of them. Everything that each of us might do or do, let's have history to it. I came, I, when I was young, three years old, when my country was invaded. And then I grew up seeing the atrocity, the human rights abuse that taking place in my country, in my own family, losing my members of family, and I myself went through that, being survival, and I'm okay now, but all this has not changed a lot of things. And today, as East Timor has become country, have our own independence, but so much homework that we need to do. And those homework is about the changing of the life of the people of East Timor. So those issues that have become a part of me, environmental issue, with the help of Earth Company, and people like yourself, Mr. Maria Sama, if Maria Sama is here, I have the, the first Lab Laura Green School, the first Green School School in East Timor ever established in the country. And then I move on, establish the Green Villas, which help us to income, some generate income, helping some of our social activities. And then because my love for my mother, who passed away in 2014, I created a scholarship on her name and helping with the money that we got from the villas from all the small business we have, created a scholarship and helped the young, young people to reach the university in East Timor. It's very hard, especially those who are in the village or in the rural areas. And back then, while doing all this work, I also work, served as the advisor for the ex-president and now currently the prime minister of East Timor. So for five years, I worked with him. I also traveled along with him to all the districts, in all supos in uh, the villas in East Timor. And I see the same issue. Poverty, people left, abandoned all the resources, their homeland, and all concentrate, moved to Delhi, the capital of Timor-Leste. So you can imagine a small place like Timor-Leste and small capital like Delhi, that's so crowded with more than four, almost 400,000 population moved from the village all to the capital, simply because there's a development, we're talking about development, that has not been equally distributed to the whole country. Everything is still centralized in the capital. And of course, our leaders are still fighting until today over the power, who should be the prime minister, who should be the president and minister, and this issue has not been finished, we continue, after 20 years, all those leaders are still fighting. And during those fighting, the politics taking place, of course, development, social changes, and all the issues that we're talking about making no difference. So I was hoping to make a difference to getting into the system. So last year, when the government was formed, and I was supposed to be one potential cabinet members of government, and I was supposed to be holding some of the ministers. But happened that somebody, or a few buddies, brought up the issue of my sexual orientation. That issue came up and right away, I was eliminated from the list, simply because they think that I, my sexual orientation will bring the country's image down. 
So from that moment, last year, I started to talk about LGBT issue. It's not about me anymore. That's what I'm thinking. And at the time, the only issue come up with me is simple. If I am with the weight, being the freedom fighter, deliver, help and liberate my country, and at least have education abroad, coming back to the country. If I am being seen as nothing, I would imagine the members of the community who have no privilege whatsoever like me. Since then, again, I found myself pick up the issue of the LGBT. And through that talk and open up about LGBT and who I am to the public, a lot of young community come to me. And that's how I learned about their life. I thought that I was the one that suffered the most because my father sold me when I was five years old because of my characteristic, mostly men. That's what my father thought, that I would bring embarrassment to the family. So he sold me for five dollars to the Indonesian military. Of course, my mother fought, fought to bring me back. So, but the members of the community that I face, I listened to their story. They went through hell even worse than me. Some of them are raped by their own father, their own uncle, with the name of corrective rape. If they sense it, they have it, then they will, they will turn themselves to be a, a normal woman. So since then, I also able to reconciliate some of the young LGBT with their family who disowned them, discriminated them, violated them for a very long time. I have successful putting them together and I established a shelter where they can come when they have trouble with their family or run away from their home or beaten up by their family, they come to the shelter. And all of that is self-funded at the moment, simply because government giving up on that issue, they think this is an issue that not normal, not supposed to be talked about, so I continue on doing that. But I have a big plan for the future, because I know I'm capable of doing something. So I'm planning about to be the first Timorese woman, because none in my country, women, are running for the president in the country. So in 2022, I'll be running for the president of Timor Leste for the become the first woman ever. <laughs> and I know it's not easy, because I already know that I'm losing. But what I don't know is I'm winning. So I'm after that, I don't know one. I might be winning. The whole thing is not Bella being the president, but maybe with that position, because I know to make some changes, sometimes you have to be in the system. And I want to work myself to earn the vote from the people, and I want to make the change from inside, if it's possible. And to do such a big plan, of course, I'm alone, I cannot. But with all of you, and more support in East Timor, because I know a lot of young people in the county love me, especially the women and the poor one. I have been working with all of them, and they all know me, and I want them to know more me through my work. I want to earn that vote, their voice, through my work. So my social changes, work activities, I want to increase it as possible, as much as possible and throughout the country as possible because I want to get the vote because I am capable of doing the job and making the difference. All the plans that I am putting here is what I wanted to do, but I'm more focused on the number two. If I can realize the number two, people know me through my work, I think I'll earn the vote from the people and I can make it. And I would like to show to my leaders today what a leader should be and what they should be do, done for the people. I'm hoping to come back here as the president of Timor Leste as the first <laughs> in <America. laughs>